Happy Friday. I hope you're doing well today and are looking forward to the weekend, Easter weekend. We've got some special things planned here at the church, so please come on out and enjoy the fellowship and a great, great special worship service uh, for the Lord of this coming Easter Sunday. But for now, let's look at the book of Galatians again. We are in the fifth chapter, and today we are going to be looking at verses 13 through 15. 13, 14, 15, just three verses of scripture here. I wanted to take a bigger chunk, but it's too much to talk about. So let's look and see what we have. Uh, once again, reading from the Amplified Bible. So the Apostle Paul says in chapter 5 and verse 13, For you, brethren, were indeed called to freedom. Only do not let your freedom be an incentive to your flesh and an opportunity or excuse for selfishness, but through love you should serve one another. For the whole law concerning human relationships is complied with in one precept. You shall love your neighbor as you do yourself. For if you bite and devour one another in partisan strife, be careful that you and your whole fellowship are not consumed by one another. Okay, so I'm going to call this one called to freedom, not to sin. The Apostle Paul here says, listen, you guys, he's talking to these Galatians, and he says, you have been called to freedom. Now, I want you to think about that. If you are a child of God, you have a calling. And there are different aspects of this calling. But one of the great central aspects of the calling that we have of God, and in fact, God wants all people everywhere, regardless of whether or not they believe in him, to experience the fulfillment of this calling. But it's only those that believe that put themselves in a position of actually experiencing it, having it. Uh, you know, procuring it in your life, okay? And what is that calling? He wants you to live life free. Be free. Now, where does this come from? What, what kind of a idea is this? Well, we know that when God created the universe, he created all living things, plants, animals, people, all living things. The, but there's a difference in those categories. God's plants uh, are, were not created in his image. The animals were not created in his image. Only people were created in the image of God. So God chose to procreate, in essence, himself, create beings that were like him. Things started out good. Adam and Eve in the garden. Beautiful fellowship in that garden. Apparently God would come in the evening and spend time with them. They enjoyed each other. Total, you know, union, total uh, peace, tranquility, total acceptance, total love between God and his greatest creation, human beings. But we know it went wrong. They disobeyed. They fell from that state of grace. They lost that intimate fellowship with God. And they began a journey to learn how to, in an essence, get back and even better, how to become once again, instead of the fallen nature person, how to become once again a true child of God, somebody who exhibits God's characteristics. And as they saw in that garden, 
God, take the life of an innocent animal. Take the skin of that animal and create clothing for them. They saw the picture of how to return to God. They were going to be cast out of the garden, but they could, could return to God by believing in his sacrifice that he would provide for them to cover their sins. And now, all these years later, everyone, anyone and everyone who has ever believed in God's sacrifice that he made for us in his son, Jesus Christ. So you believe in Jesus. You honestly, truly, heartfelt believe in Jesus. Then you find your way to God. You have this spiritual family relationship with God. He is literally your father. You are literally his child. You have his DNA within you, his spirit within you and you are called to freedom. That's the kind of person that God is. God is free. Theologians might say a free moral agent. What does that mean? God is a free moral agent, and guess what? So are you. God has freedom to choose, but he always chooses the righteous, the just, the true, the perfect. Why? Because that's who he is. He is a, a God of liberty, of freedom, and he chooses the right 100% of the time, not because somebody forces him to, but because of who he is. Hmm. That's what God wants for us. He wants you to live in freedom. But then Paul says here, don't use your freedom as occasion to sin. Don't use your freedom What in, 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 in context. He says, um, uh, do not let your freedom be an incentive to your flesh and an opportunity or excuse for selfishness. Sin. Don't, you know, and so here's the great dilemma that a lot of preachers have. You know, when you start talking about this free grace, you think in your mind, oh man, what I'm doing is, is giving people a license to sin because you tell them it doesn't matter what you do, you're always going to be saved. You'll never lose that salvation. Oh, then I'm going to go out and do whatever I want if I don't lose my salvation. But that misses the whole point. If you don't share the free grace of God with people and get them to understand what a wonderful blessing they have been given by God by being called to freedom... They will never be able to build a life for God after they're saved out of love. And that's his message here. Don't use your freedom to spend it on yourself selfishly. Use your freedom to love each other. That's our calling. Our calling is to love each other like God loves us. What a wonderful, wonderful blessing this is. Don't dishonor it by being selfish. And then Paul gives kind of a warning. He says, listen, if you, uh, of course he said in verse 14, you fulfill all the law by loving, you love your neighbor as yourself. You fulfill all that. And so that's the how we should apply our freedom. And then he gives the warning. But if you bite and devour one another in partisan strife, be careful that you and your whole fellowship are not consumed by one another. So if you choose not to use your freedom to exercise free love for all your, especially your brothers and sisters in Christ, and I think Paul is, is thinking about the local congregations that uh, he was dealing with there. If you're constantly at odds with each other and fighting with each other, you have now put yourself in a position like, like animals, you know, the survival of the fittest and eat or be eaten. And you put yourself in a dangerous spot where you may actually be eaten by an adversary. And your life consumed. The worthiness of your life, the potential of your life gets destroyed, done away. If we live selfishly, sinfully in that selfishness, instead of using the freedom that we were called to by God 
to love each other. I think this is a really important lesson. Think about it, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.